listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your hosts, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What is happening, Nasty? What's up, Rig Aurelia? You all right? Yeah, man, you? You recovered? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not recovered. <laughs> yeah? I had a long weekend. Yeah, man. Yeah. You're dehydrated there, right? A little right? bit. A little bit dehydrated, yeah. What the hell happened? I just, I, I was overserved, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I it was happens. Overserved. I, I said no, and they just, they, no, it didn't work coming. that way. So, but uh, we made it to the championship game yeah, Sunday. We did. Big W. For Natty Ice, Joey Rivera, the Hedgehog. Yeah, a little tribute. A little tribute to Hedge. We should put an ice bag by because this young man hurt himself pretty bad. Actually, bad growing tear. Oh, um, no. Tough way to, to go down. Checked out. Sudsy had to help him, literally, like, help him to the get to the hospital. He went to the no hospital way. the other night. Not yeah, bad, so, eh? Yeah, he couldn't even walk the next day. Oh, that's tough. Off a big save. Too. Yeah, it was a big, big save. Big save. save. He said, I'm not a butterfly goalie. Well, you were there because yeah. he was down. But, uh... Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah. You had a good game. You look like uh, Chris Simon out there, though. Your hair is covered in your nameplate. Yeah, man. getting long, dude. Letting her buck. Oh, I see it, but we're going to... You're going to try and trim it up, aren't trim, you? A little trimsy for you. No, man. We're, we're yeah. letting this thing go. Yeah, it's... Another, another two years. That's the longest I've ever seen it. Yeah, man. What the for hell sure. is the point of cutting it? True. Good yeah. point. Yeah, man. So, big win. Yeah. Not so much in Flyerland. No. Tough night last night. Uh... Just got to feel for the guys. I yeah. mean, honestly, like it, watching that, it's just breakdowns. You know, you just, I think, mentally maybe out of it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You got some, some young guys in there that don't have a whole lot of experience. And yeah. the mindset, obviously, the last, you know, 15, 10, five games down the stretch, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough when you're out of a playoff spot. And, um, but yeah, it was ugly. No, there was some, there were yeah. some breakdowns to say the least. Um, coverage issues, just just mismanagement of situations, getting caught outside the dots or close to. Um, but yeah, it was it was a rough one. Um, but um, there was a, there was a hit in the game we wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah. Because Wilson. a lot of people have different perspective on these types of hits. With with uh, Wilson engaging in a hit on Cam Atkinson, uh, what were your thoughts on it? Well. I didn't play the game as we know, but you did, so you you have a better perspective. But I just I hate when guys like and and I know what Cam was doing. He's trying to cut back, make a play. He saw him coming, yeah. so he's trying to cut it back, which you understand. But he makes himself vulnerable, and I'm, you know, Wilson's coming in to engage on a hit. It, it's hard, you know, this going as fast as you can coming at a guy. It would have been a clean hit, but he turned, so he hits him. Like you don't want to. I hope hopefully Cam's okay, but. I hate when guys turn like that, yeah. but you know, it's I'm not blaming Cam either, but it's tough for a guy to stop coming in for a hit like that. Yeah, when a guy turns really quick on him. So, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with you fully. Um, I understand skill guys cut back and they're trying to be deceptive. Yeah, but you got Tom Wilson coming at you in a straight line. He's got. There's hit. nowhere to go. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. There's nowhere to go there, and unfortunately, Cam gets his foot kind of jammed up in the ice, that too. turns awkward, and doesn't fully complete the cutback. Yeah, he's probably fine if he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, but, but I still part, think, like, you know, Wilson's fully engaged at that point. Yeah. There's, there's no way you can turn as a guy um, that's coming full speed and, right. and, and trying to engage in a hit. So it's one of those things, you know, we coaching youth hockey and stuff like that, it's, it's always one of those things you want to coach to not turn your back turn away and put yourself in an even more vulnerable situation. Yeah, especially that close to the boards. That right? close to the boards. You're better off just going up against the boards, absorbing the hit. Yeah. I understand he's trying to funnel the puck right. down yeah. versus, you know, the potential turnover. But those are those are touchy plays. Um, you, you, you're, you're putting yourself in a bad spot a lot of the times, especially with a guy that's a known hitter and a big physical guy. Like yeah. you, you, Overall, game was a bunch of fluff and – yeah. Got outshot by a country mile and out competed. Just uh, didn't even look like the same in the same league, honestly. No, it didn't last. I, you know, I don't know if it's guys are tired. You know, like who knows? You can't. You, nobody's making excuses, including them. But it was not a not a pretty game. 
Uh, yeah. When you got nine to ten left, you know, you try to finish as strong as possible, especially with the young kids. Bobby Brink got his first yeah. game last night. He's going got an apple. National championship. Yeah, got an apple. And um, congrats to him. Um, Harry Bricker, 2,500 games. Oh, wow. I didn't professional know. Professional hockey. Congrats, yeah, congratulate Bricks. Congratulate, Brickyard. That's a lot oh, of man. games. That's a lot of games, man. He started in Hershey when he was 18. That's crazy. Uh, man. Full time. So, yep. Wow. Props to you, Brickyard. Yep. Oh, Brickyard. Oh, yeah. And then moving on, uh, some sad news in the hockey world. Former yep. Philadelphia Phantom. Yep. And I don't think he played any games with the Flyers, but he did not. Played uh, for Anaheim played Ducks Anaheim. mainly, I think, and uh, mainly in the American Hockey League, uh, the IHL back in the day, uh, Garrett Burnett. Yeah, Bernie. Rest in peace, brother. Uh, I never actually had the chance to meet him outside of potentially almost getting killed by the guy in uh, <laughs> uh, Minnesota Wilds training camp. Uh, got in a little skirmish with him, and I was still not you know, physically large enough right. to, to tackle a guy that size. And I still hadn't adopted the role of being a fighter yet. Um, but we got into a little skirmish and I looked at the guy and he looked like he was a WWE wrestler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was going to squeeze my throat and, yes. hurt, and hurt me really badly. He actually so. does look like a wrestler, doesn't he? <laughs> but um, he no, that was my personal experience. I've heard a lot of stories about him. We talked about yeah. him a few times about yeah, eating Bernie. Flexol and some crazy yeah. shit. Uh, Bernie was, he was just one of those guys, nicest guy doing anything for you. You know, tough was willing to fight every night. Like I remember with the Phantoms when he would, you know, we had a. It was the year we won the cup the first time, ninety seven, ninety eight, and he came in, and we had a really good team. So he was in and out of the lineup. But when he, I remember he had a couple games where he fought three times in a game. I mean, he was willing to go with anyone, and you know, he ended up making it to Anaheim. Yeah. You know, I know no one ever probably gave him a shot with that, and he ended up playing a full year there. So he he was a great guy, and yeah, he. He ate flex all, which I know we've talked about, which just uh, I just don't even understand that. <laughs> and then we had uh, cat had this that stuff we called the cat jizz, which was hotter <laughs> than flex all. Guys could barely put it on their bodies, and he dipped his power bar in it and ate it. We're just like, what is that doing to your insides? Yeah, man? like I, that cannot be good. He do it every game, every game. But uh, he seemed to like the taste of it. But, uh, yeah, I guess so. Really nice guy, man. Um, battled for his teammates. You know, just a good dude. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I heard, yeah, definitely. And cause right. of death is still hasn't been released, but yeah. uh, it don't matter, uh, you know. Too young. But, yeah, young, exactly, young, 46 man. years old. Rest in peace, brother. Yep. Um, and, you know, wish all the, the, the family all yep. the condolences and, and the love in the world. Yep. And moving on to more positive side of things with yep. our, our, our boy Lou Nolan. Lou. 50 man. years. Unbelievable. And he's the best, too. He is the best. I love Lou. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be joining us here. Yeah. Um, he was supposed to be here with us today. Yeah. Unfortunately, had to uh, push it back, uh, I think, two weeks. So we'll, we'll have him on in a couple weeks yep. to talk about uh, the guy. big day for him. But, yeah, what an awesome guy. Got to, you know, go the other night. They did a good job um, presenting with some things. And it, it was just awesome. He's such a good guy. Elvis used to stand beside him at the, you know, at the door to give the guys high five and everything. He was just always so good to Elvis. He's good to everyone. Just a really good man. And got fifty years, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Amazing. It? It's amazing. Yeah, South Philly guy, isn't he? Just yeah, the young young guy that just like, loved yep. the Flyers and somehow It's a great picture of him in the locker room where uh there's it's the picture's actually of Frank Lewis, the old equipment manager, and he's yeah. walking they're coming back from MSG, like obviously in this in the seventies and uh Lou is a young Lou has got his glasses on like mine and eating a sandwich and, and Frank Frank has a one key like one to the key. locker, yeah, you know, now there's like yeah, 10, 20 10 keys, yeah. yeah. Uh, Frank had like one key on his belt loop is kind of funny, yeah. but yeah, lose the man. Awesome guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I spent, uh, spent some time with him in the penalty box. Uh, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, for a few years. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, always uh, always such a good person to me and just good energy and smiling and keeping things light. So I, I thought it was cool the other night, uh, Anthony Stolars was back with yeah, Anaheim and, and uh Got the win, unfortunately, for the Flyers, but good for Stoli to get to come back here and uh, and get a win. It did start out great for him. I think the first two shots went in the net. But uh, anyway, after the game, he went over and congratulated Lou, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, super you classy. Know. I saw that. And then last, last week we did the Q&A, and we yes. got carried away in one of the questions. <laughs> it was two parts, and we actually forgot to answer the one. Okay. And I'll... Uh, I'll bring it back up here for you. It okay. was actually directed to you because you uh, work with both of these guys. McLaren or by Lois, if they go five times, oh boy, yeah. what's the outcome? Man. It's a tough one. I, I don't know. I saw Woody. We called 
Stone, well, we called him Woody and Stone Cold, uh, Steve McLaren. I saw Scott Parker absolutely crush his nose into powder. He didn't go down and then went on to win the fight. Frankie, I just saw absolutely mangle people for, you know, three years. I don't, man, they both just throw so I don't even know which way to go. You could. It would probably be five knockouts. I don't know which. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, right. That's just such a tough question. I don't. Yeah. Um, Frankie's fights were a lot quicker than like Max. One of those guys. That would, usually though, if he connected to, he would yeah, knock he guys was out too. But he would have a little bit of longer fights more than Frankie would because usually Frankie's first five, one of them hit the guy and it was over. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, that's a really tough question. I, and I'd hate to say one or the other because I don't want one of them coming after yeah. me <laughs> either. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a speculation. Okay. F- Frankie gets three. Stone Cold okay. gets two. Three to two. I mean, I, and, think, and, and, go I, I think it'd go either way yeah. too. But Do you I imagine know. they were on the same, they were on the team at yeah, the same I know, time? Yeah, scary. For a little bit, not yeah. for long. But. but either way, having those guys floating oh, around boy. warm-ups. It'd be a hard time to get a yeah. pregame <laughs> nap and knowing those guys are floating oh. around. And then uh, cruising around the NHL, yep. got some uh, some milestones for for a few guys. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Hockey wow. reaching 100 points last what night. What a player, um, local guy, awesome, amazing feat. Jeez, and what a skilled guy. He's so good, man. He's so good. Yeah, what a passer. What a yeah. what vision. And we talk about being uh, yeah, deceitful when you're on the ice yeah. and uh, oh elusive. Like yes. this guy, don't get hit. This guy no, he just doesn't. like finds a way to avoid all kinds of confrontation somehow yeah. he, um, i remember his his first well the first time we played against him when he had been in calgary is for his rookie year and someone was he was just dangling oh, and yeah. someone was like someone run him over and i, I don't remember who it was but someone was like good luck yeah, like, no, try right. yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly you know like, everybody kind of laughed but like you're right he's so elusive like you look like he's literally my size. Yeah, oh like yeah. he's my size, and the guy, what he does is is amazing. And it's nice. He's a hometown guy, and yeah. could be in the black and orange. Yeah, I know that could would be, be nice. Yeah, sure. I feel like that would be the guy if you're gonna yeah try and replace G and some. Like, yes, that's the guy. And we were talking offline a little bit about like the, the difference between like like ultra elite, elite players yes. in the category and the point production versus like you know right at, at some point very elite players but you know g's a point a game guy yes these guys are like two points a game it's amazing oh you know, just under you know yeah i mean mcdavid's got 108 points and um and he's got nine more games to go yeah you know and that's like insane point production but uh and people don't realize you, know, I know. you 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 can't replace these types of guys. You cannot. Uh, well, maybe 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 a guy like G with you know his production at this point of his career. But if you want elite elite production, like you, this is the, those are the types of guys you have to draft. Yeah, yeah. You don't just you, do. you don't just sign those guys and put up a hundred, you know, hundred and ten points a year. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, Chris Kreider hit the fifty mark. Amazing. Uh, Hubert always just keeps keeps Gosh. scoring his well. He's right behind McDavid and. Um, I feel like the the scoring is up this year. It's crazy. Austin I mean, Matthews. Like, yeah, Austin I feel Matthews like he scores two there. goals a night. Yeah, like, we got fifty eight. We got fifty eight now. Yeah, some insane milestones. But yeah, it's nice to see Johnny just being a local guy. Yeah, uh, and reach the hundred point mark. Pretty nice. Pretty uh, pretty respectable feat. Wow, I know. I saw his dad. He was up uh, in. Um, Dunlops a couple of weeks ago and oh, talked to him and he was just saying like he really loves Daryl Sutter. He's yeah, like, he this guy's just a straight shooter. Well, you know, oh, yeah. s- it's funny watching his his, his press conferences yeah. every day. I just I watch him and just laugh. But he said Johnny just loves him because yeah. he tells shoots it straight. Yeah, to him. exactly. Simple, so. simple guy. You could turn you could turn his interviews on mute and just look and, at his facial yeah. expressions. <laughs> well, it's usually a one word answer. Yeah. No, team. But game. then he's got like all these like these like weird faces he got going on after. <laughs> it's just like just comical. It makes me laugh because Jeff uh, Jeff Carter. I remember we went to dinner uh, in L.A. Um, with Richie and Stoll, and uh, it was me and Chemo, I think, and Hartsey, and, and uh, we went with Richie and Carter and Stoll, Jared Stoll, and uh, they were talking about Daryl, you know. Yeah. And they were like, sometimes he, like, just gets his hands going and doesn't say anything, and we're like, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> like, he's doing this, but he's not, he's making faces, you know, and they're just like, they, someone will just jump and go, like, on the ice, because, but they just said, like, it's always word and word answers. Are you ready? Like, walk up behind, yeah. scary guys all the time. Boosh does a really good uh, Daryl Sutter, but... Yeah, it's 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 uh, Johnny, amazing year, and he he loves Sutter, so it's kind of cool. So you think that he, he he would leave Calgary then if he loves? I, I, that's why I mean they got a good team, man. Yeah. Like I don't know, like is Calgary gonna throw a big offer at him? Because he's not a is he a free agent this year, baller? He is. 
And Kachuk's an RFA. Oh. Yeah. Oof. It'd be a tough situation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 saying. right. That's the truth. Yeah. But they got a good team, man. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want to leave an environment where you, you're appreciated by the fans. If you actually yeah. like the coach, you don't want to go somewhere else. You don't even have a clue. Right. Um, but, well, you know, maybe that's just more hypothetical that people think that Johnny's coming to Flyerland just yeah. because he's local. Just because, yeah. But um, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we will see. A couple other things around the league. Uh, your boy Ryan Hartman. <laughs> Well, he sniped. Big he snipe. did. How many, he's how many 29 G's. 29 G's this Career year. year. But he'll be facing some sort of fine, I'm sure, for giving uh, Evander Kane well, the old bird. He number one. Number one, yeah. He just said you're number one. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, that Respectful was... Uh, thing. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what was said or what was going on, but uh, yeah, he's he's going to get a little fine for that. Yeah. A little smack on the wrist. A little smack on the wrist. He's an emotional little fella. Yeah, he it is. happens. He can be. He it can happens. Be. Yeah. And then uh, talking about emotion, our boy uh, Evgeny Malkin the other night. Ooh. I know he's been disciplined already, but that yeah. was quite the cross check to right to the teeth. Yeah, right. Well, he doesn't have any. Yeah, that exactly. poor guy. He's, he's already missed. It. Thank out. goodness he didn't lose them again. Uh, that was pretty vicious, man. That was some stick work there. Yeah, that reminded me of uh, Shell Samuelson's uh, um, talks to the D, especially with D that didn't have like experience fighting. Yeah. You know, he's like defending yourself and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. He's like, just put the stick in his face. <laughs> you won't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so he always cross check guys in the face. face. So like, you can't do that anymore, Sammy. You can't cross check people in the mouth. You used to do it with that Titan he had that yeah, weighed four put pounds. Put it in his face. They oh. won't come near you. But um, yeah, it was quite That's the fun. quite the cross check. Yeah. Four games. I mean, I guess you got to you gotta make a point. You can't uh, give these guys no, free passes. That was for, pretty blatant yeah. cross check to the face. Be interesting if do they cross paths the rest of the season? Those two teams probably not, but um, be interesting somewhere down the somewhere down the line that yep. uh, Malkin might have to answer the bell. Who he knows? Might have to. I don't know if he's afraid. Like he's he's a little he's got a little crazy in him. I yeah, think. he'd but, probably uh, just do it again. He'd just stick you again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically cross that's what he'll do. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, just uh, teams around the league will be lo- looking out for obviously the Panthers eight game. Yeah. Winning streak here now and top of the league with Colorado. They're fun to watch. Anybody else got your eye, Nest? Toronto's kind of picked it up, although they lost last night. And, you know, Edmonton's kind of winning again. I just It's it's all interesting. St. Louis is hot. Yeah. You know, Chiefs got They're them six in a row going too, the right believe, way eh? again. And um, I'm just, I just can't wait to watch this Florida team. Yeah. You know, like, I know it's more obviously now because of G's there, but they are just a scary good team. I'm, I'm excited for the playoffs to start. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I just feel like there's, like, there's a lot more momentum with some of these teams. Like maybe just maybe it's just, again, maybe the G thing, but a couple of these other teams really seem special. Yeah. Should be interesting to and get going in the playoffs and see how they can continue their momentum and – and yeah, Tampa, keep games. Tampa's had a, yeah, they've been had a hard time lately. You know, our boy Moose got a shutout the other night, and then, but they lost last night one nothing. They haven't been playing real well. I don't know if they're tired, but think about the hockey they've played right. in the last two years. I mean, I, I, I would think Moose would get a, more games down the stretch. Just let Vasilevsky right, rest. Right, yeah, you let know? Him rest. I mean, they, they lose one nothing last night. You're not putting that on the goalie, but just maybe the guy needs a little rest. You know, might be a wise play. Generally, that does happen towards the end of the season. Usually, I mean, they're yeah. obviously locked up and. Or, you know, Tampa's not locked up, are they? No, yeah. no, no. no. Um, but either way, they're they will be, and uh, you still got to yeah. rest your your go to guys. I mean, it's usually the last five games of the season, so they probably still have nine, ten games left. But yeah, we will see. All right, Nast, NHL award predictions. Yes, who do you got for the Norris? The Norris, Ooh. it's it's either Makar or Yossi. Uh I'll go with. Yossi. Yeah. That's uh, what after I'm going watching with. him play. And Bakar is sick. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. Like, this guy's unreal. Like, Colorado's not. They, I don't think they're the team they are without him, obviously. I agree. Like, he's, he, he's amazing. But this Yossi, man, Roman yeah. Yossi, is, we saw him play a few weeks oh, ago. Yeah, like, insane. Yeah. Guys. Just such a good player. He's got a hundred points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he might, he might crack the hundred. I don't, points. I don't know how he doesn't win it. And I, I hear the argument on McCarr too. Oh he's, yeah, hundred percent. He's a great player, player but. But I think it's I think it's got to be Yossi. Yeah. Based on again, if he cracks a hundred, then it's a guarantee. Cause yes. When's the last time a defenseman has done that? All right. Who do you got for the Hart Trophy? For the Hart, man, there's a lot of names: uh, yeah. Huberdo, Matthews, McDavid, Drysital. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll say 
I would take any of them. Probably wouldn't argue, but I'm gonna go with Huberto. Yeah, because the guy's just a point machine, man, and and you know they're one of the top teams in the league, obviously. So I'm I'm gonna give it to him. Yeah, there you go. It's a good pick. Uh, I'm going McJesus. Uh, not a bad pick. Just, yeah, right. <laughs> he's not bad, yeah. and only because he's just uh, a highlight real machine, and yeah. obviously leading the league in points. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's hard to argue, I guess, either way. Yeah, but uh, certainly four or five, six guys there. It could be yeah. easily winning that one. Yeah, we missed probably other names that could be right there in the voting. So How about it's going to be hard coming up with three yeah. nominees yeah, because right? the ones you leave out, right? Yeah, I like, know. it's so true. How about uh, Calder? Calder, I'm going to go with Jano in Nashville after watching him play. Leads the league in fights. Yeah, like that's 30 incredible. goals. Yeah. Like, I mean, you talk about, I don't know the guy, but I'm thinking old school hockey yeah, player no, right here. Making I mean, an impact. No big question. time impact on that team. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, the Trevor Zegras, Anaheim. Yeah. And, and only because he's made the highlight reels with his Michigan or yes. version of Michigan how many times this year. Ultra skill guy. You God, don't see that so type good. of skill. Um, well, I, I guess you've seen that type of skill more and more with these younger guys. But to, to be pulling that off that many times. In the NHL. In the NHL. <laughs> in your rookie season. Probably uh, anywhere, actually. Anywhere. I mean, if you pull that play off. But, yeah, you're right. Like, um, can't go wrong there. That's my pick, anyways. Yep. Um, and then uh, Vesna. I think it's probably a tap-in. I think? think it's a tap-in for Shesterkin. I don't think it's a question. I think yeah, it's him. I'm right there with you. Are you? Seems like it's happened. Yeah, I, I mean, Joey uh, Hedgehog Rivera won it in uh, the men's league. He, he did. Won, he he did. did win the Vesna. So. And he paid a price for that. He did pay a price, but congrats to him on yeah, that. Yeah, torn groins in, yeah. in the hospital. <laughs> oh, jeez, poor guy. <laughs> Wish him the best. Yep. All right, Nas, before we wrap up episode 70, want to mention a giveaway we're doing on TikTok. Yes. This beautiful Tovi entourage. Yes. It's a thing of beauty. It is light. It's balanced, and the puck snaps right off that blade, oh, as you've shown uh, week after week. It does. This thing is a piece of magic. It is in the making. Um, so check us out on TikTok. There'll be details in TikTok for the giveaway for your own Toby entourage. Snipe with the best. Snipe, and don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. And give us five-star ratings on Apple and Spotify. This episode was presented to you by our friends at Cureleaf, cureleaf cureleaf.com, medical marijuana dispensary, friendly, knowledgeable staff, all your medical marijuana needs, cureleaf.com. And that's a wrap, Nast. Episode 70 in the books, Nast. Yes. That's a wrap. Be Be sure to tune in next week for episode 71. Until then, stay safe, knuckleheads. See you, knuckleheads.